Did you suggest running a separate EQ? Does it really make a big difference? Or is the head unit EQ good enough? Wonderful question. I like this question. It seems to be getting asked a lot lately, and I, I'll answer it as many times as you ask it. When you look at an aftermarket radio, most aftermarket radios have a 13-band EQ. Some of them have a 9-band parametric EQ, but most of the good ones are going to have 13 bands. Some have 15 bands, and it's what's called a global EQ, meaning if you adjust treble, bass, mid, any one of the frequencies, it adjusts all the speakers in the car. There's nothing wrong with that. It makes it sound better. The thing to keep in mind, though, is that the speaker that's four feet Feet away from you is by the time it gets to your ear is going to sound a little bit different than the speaker that's three feet away from you when you go to a full dsp eq meaning something that has a big dsp built into it you get band equalization meaning that each speaker speaker output band has its own EQ. And the reason why they do that is because if you want to set up your speakers to match so that when that speaker gets to your ear and this speaker gets to your ear, they're both the same sound. I know it sounds weird that if you're playing a song and, and for the most part, they're both playing the same, they should sound the same when they get to your ear, but they don't. And the reason for that is because it's a car. It's down low, there's no obstruction, it could be bouncing off. There's a lot of things that change the way a speaker is gonna sound between where it leaves the cone and then gets to your ear. So when you go with full big processor, you can fix all that. Being able to fix that is the advantage of going with the bigger processor. Now, time alignment, a lot of radios have time alignment. Technically, it's it's gonna be the same because you display a speaker so many milliseconds, it really doesn't matter what device is doing that. Uh, when you attenuate the volume, it's pretty much the same. If you attenuate it here, you attenuate it there, you're still attenuating that. The advantage of a bigger processor is if you want to go active, meaning you want to take out your passive crossovers, and let's say do an amp for your tweeters, an amp for your mid, you're not gonna be doing that with a radio in the sense that some of them do what's called network mode, which allow you to do treble, mid and sub but that's it it doesn't give you the ability to do treble mid sub rear and all that so you don't get eight channels you still only have the six that come with it so there are some advantages the nice thing too is when you combine the two then you might get what i like to call the best of both worlds so if you have an aftermarket deck and you add a processor to it that global eq is nice so once you've actually got it eq mastered out so that when they arrive at your ear they're both sounding the same it gives you a great center image everything sounds nice and dancing across the dash let's say you put in an old recording or a new recording and the treble goes through the roof or the treble's missing or the mid-range isn't there you can then go into your aftermarket radio and adjust minutely very small i like to limit people between plus or minus 3 db you can go in and you can adjust that and fix the music a little bit and that helps so yeah there's something to be said for doing both it's up to you though